So what about the engine? Probably one thing everyone's going to want to know is how much power does it make, or does it make more power? And yes, it does make more peak horsepower. But if we think back to the concept again of the ultimate trail performance machine, having 200 horsepower doesn't make the best trail machine. Having more peak horsepower will certainly improve corner to corner acceleration. But really we want to increase mid-range and low end torque that, uh, that from the starting line jump out of the hole and that corner to corner acceleration. And it took a number of areas of improvement and some new technologies to really make the Apex engine any better than it already was. If there were a weakness, there was that off-throttle engine braking. We reduced it in the Nitro by adding EBRS. We've done the same thing in the Apex. So there is a lot less engine braking. We also changed a number of components to make more power, including a new intake, a new fuel injection system that includes uh, the idle speed control unit now, which incorporates engine braking reduction. We even changed the intake valve event angle to allow more overlap. But we couldn't do that without adding a new technology, and that new technology was XUP. On the exhaust side, the entire exhaust system is new and changed. Not only is it still titanium, but the exhaust pipe diameter is increased to 38 millimeters. It's no longer a 4 into 2 into 1 system, it's now a 4 into 1 system. And we've added something from our motorcycle division called XUP, or Exhaust Ultimate Power Valves, what it stands for. And what XUP kind of basically does is control the rebound reflective exhaust pulses. Those exhaust pulses in any exhaust pipe are already tuned to a certain length to sort of peak and boost power in a certain RPM range. But it also provides some dips in the power curve as you go up the engine RPM. XUP allows us to eliminate some of the dips in the power curve at RPM ranges that aren't tuned specifically to the pipe length. So XUP is basically a clamshell that opens and closes at the end of the exhaust header before the muffler and changes how the exhaust pulses reflect back to the engine. For you, what does it do? Well, it increases the torque curve and the response curve all the way through the mid and low end RPM range. It also allows us to tune the pipe for absolute high performance. Adding XUP also allows us to actually shorten the exhaust pipes, thereby reducing weight. And you'll notice that the mufflers are now closer with the shortened exhaust pipes to the rider, improving the center of gravity. So XUP has an impact on a lot of things. Throttle control, throttle feeling. This engine pulls harder and much smoother than the Apex engine. Another thing that comes with this new Mono 2 skid frame are a set of extrovert drivers. We knew we were going to make more power, especially in the low to mid-range torque range, and we knew that that extra power would probably overcome the introvert drivers. So this applies a new drive system that has both introvert and extrovert drivers, but we built them out of phase. That just means that the introvert drivers, the traditional Apex drivers, are going to run most of the time. And the extrovert drivers really aren't going to contact the track until the introvert drivers are overpowered a little bit. Because they're out of phase, that means that they're going to make a little bit less noise than a, a typical extrovert drive system. But once you apply enough power and the extroverts take over, it's really going to reduce the amount of track ratcheting. When you add that control and that precision to EPS and all the changes to the handling and geometry, you get an overall package. It's really a combination of all these 20 or 30 elements that come together that make this machine so much better than the Apex it's replacing. Another part of ergonomics that we changed would have had to do with the rider envelope and the wind protection. A lot of effort went into improving wind protection in this machine. But again, you run into some difficulties. It's easy to make the windshield bigger and protect the rider more, but the bigger it is, the more drag you create, and that can negatively affect top speed. So we did a lot of computer modeling and some wind tunnel testing to find out where the envelope is around the rider. And it's easy, again, to block the wind coming from the front, but there's a Bernoulli principle that will actually bring a swirl in wind effect in behind you. So a lot of effort was made to make sure the rider was protected from wind coming from front of you, but also to extend that air bubble behind the rider to make sure the swirl in effect wasn't making you cold from behind. And when you look at the windshield and you look at the design and the shape, the outer edges are really controlling a lot of the tip-in airflow. And the same goes for the side panels. When you look more closely at the side panels, you'll even see little wings or little sort of fluctuations in the contour to bring that air bubble more around the rider and behind the rider. Even the handle grip warmers have been changed. They're now updated to the new vector warmers, and they've been given more juice throughout the RPM range. We've got more magneto stator output, so we can apply more juice throughout the rev range. They'll be warmer at almost any RPM. 
And pay attention to the little details. There's so many tiny little details that really speak about Yamaha. Even if you look at the etching in the side panels, a pattern imprinted to prevent some of the scratching that can occur from your knees. If you look at the detail in the air box, we've spent a lot of time considering the look and the appeal. We wanted to create a very lean and muscular look. So a lot of these little details, they may look very, very Yamaha, but they're also designed to make this kind of an angry lean muscle machine. Now you might be asking yourself, is this the only variation? Well, no, in fact, there are three variations. This being the base model with the standard monoshock and the standard front shocks, there is also a special edition or an SE variation. And that one has a complete Fox Float air package. It has two float twos up front with the negative air spring, and it has an all new monoshock mega float in the rear. We got together with Fox and we're determined to co develop a Fox Float air shock for the monoshock. We know that floats provide incredible weight savings. We also know they provide um, great anti-bottoming because the spring rate ramps up as you move through the stroke, but they also provide a really plush ride comfort. So for aggressive riding, having a float mega in the rear really is gonna help with anti-bottoming. And imagine that adding those three floats and taking off all the coil springs can drop 10 pounds just from losing the coil springs on that machine. And one of the great things about the Fox float variation is you can adjust the air pressure in each shock, which effectively changes the spring rate. And I really like the mega float in the rear because that, sp that air spring has great anti-bottoming. A lot of people are really fond of the 136 uh, LTX version. And in testing, we did test a 136, but we didn't build it. Because we also tested a 144 XTX variation. And what was really surprising for many of us in testing was how the 144 version with the tipped up rails like the Nitro XDX actually seemed to outhandle the 136 variation. But by going to 144, you get all that bump bridging characteristics that a long track has, plus it works much better than the 136 off trail and in deep snow. Now I'm not going to say this is a boondock and mountain sled, it's definitely not. It still has an inch and a quarter ripsaw track. It was still designed with trail handling in mind. But it does have the DualShock Pro 144 skid frame, very similar to the Nitro XTX. One of the great things about the XTX variation, the 144, is its versatility. Not only is it going to be an awesome cross-country sled, which gives you great stability in, a, in any kind of straight line where there's bumps, but it also gives you all that freedom to do a little bit of off-trail riding. When you add EPS and all the front steering and geometry changes, and you add all that power coming from the low and mid-range torque, many people will find the XTX to be their favorite variation. It all depends on the kind of riding that you want to do. To sum it all up, what do we really have here? We have a collection of new technologies and ideas in the sum total much more than any individual part. But we did all these things for you, the Apex customer, because that's who this sled's really targeted for. The High Performance Trail Guy, our Apex customer, you're the guy that we listen to. You asked for lightweight, we gave you a lightweight feeling. You know, we could have dropped some weight, but we did not want to sacrifice durability. You wanted more power, we gave you more power where it counts, in the mid-range and the low end. We also gave you more power on top. You asked for more handling, better handling, improved handling. We give you not only improved handling and flatter handling, but much more steering precision. You've asked for improved suspension, we've given you a brand new Monoshock 2 128 and a brand new Monoshock 2 128 full Fox Float Air and, for those of you who are asking, a brand new XTX package. All of these new technologies and features were developed for you, the Apex Rider, because you requested them. But don't take my word for it. Come on out to one of our demo rides and try it for yourself. I promise you won't be disappointed.